So, uh, okay, so I was living a car free life before it was cool. No joke. I went to college in Bellingham, Washington, a beautiful university, and I lived out in the county. I'm talking about way out the big box stores by like the border of Canada, really far away. And uh, as you can imagine, public transportation was amazing. A mile from my house, I had a bus stop, and the bus went by once the hour, on the hour, from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Oh, yeah. I would uh, leave class about 5.30 p.m., so I would party hardy from 5.30 to 7.45, right before doing the mad dash to catch my bus. Fortunately, I've always been blessed with the ability to talk quick, dance quick, and drink quicker. So I was able to get all my business done just in time to head home. It was a good life. And uh, until one, one weekend, I went to visit my brother. He had just uh, recently moved to an amazing communal punk house yeah, near UW in Seattle. And I went to visit him there, and I learned, my mind was blown. I learned so many things, the wonderful, um, what it means to be a communal house, right? So I learned things like dumpster diving, and, oh, chore charts. <laughs> and most importantly, I learned the right way of car free living. I learned all about bike commuting. Uh, those crazy Seattleites um, would uh, leave to go party on their bikes and would be able to like go out and party way past 8 p.m. <laughs> any, any day of the week. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> so uh, I, I saw the light. I saw the light and though I had no money, I mean I didn't really have a job. I could barely afford to like buy like cheap beer once in a while, but I was determined. I mean, after my, my trip to Seattle, where I got to ride a, like my new bikey friend's junker bike around, I was, I was ready. And I went on Craigslist, and it was actually quite easy to find a bike. And uh, I found this one, and he read the ed I'm gonna paraphrase because I don't quite remember it, but the key words were classic and all original componentry. <laughs> yeah. And um, what was the other one? Oh, barely used. And it was in mint green condition, and it was only $75. Now, from your laughter, I, I think you got the code words, you know? Barely used, you know, has been sitting in a moist basement for the past 15 years. Classic, meaning it was a great department store, 1990 mountain bike. And um, what was the other one? Oh, original componentry, yeah. Never oil chain and dry rot tires. <laughs> I had no idea what that meant, didn't care. And it was like green, so why not? $75, I called the guy so quickly because I did not want anyone to buy that bike from under me, <laughs> right? And once I got it, I like took it to my new bikey friends and I was like, check it out. Yeah, and to, to my surprise, they were a little nervous, <laughs> and they manifested some concern, because I had to, you know, my intention was to ride it in the treacherous country roads, and I didn't get it, and also, I was young, I'm able-bodied, strong, stubborn, stupid, and most importantly, I was gonna let no dude tell me what I could or could not do, fuck that shit. Yeah. Uh, so, so I, one morning, I got up really early, and there's a few people that have lived with me, so you guys can tell what a feat it is for me to wake up early. So I woke up extra early that morning, yeah, and I hopped on my bike, and I went off. And the first two thirds of the ride were amazing. It was mostly flat. Traffic was interesting. Um, uh, so the route that I had to take, because I lived in the county, was, uh, had, had the cycle track, and, and for you guys that don't know, um, county talk for the cycle track means uh, mostly sidewalk. And by mostly, I mean like, it's either sidewalk or like a small um, shoulder. And uh, the fun part is that it dead ended into a jersey barrier. And, and that led to 
two, two freeway entrances, one to go, it was a two lane, one to go south and one to go north. So that was an adventure. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, because it's like the only route, it's also the only semi-truck route that connects Canada to the United States. <laughs> adventure, so fun. And now that we're talking about traffic, I might as well tell you about the Costco. Y'all have Smarty Pants phone. If you Google what is the busiest Costco in the whole country, it is that Costco. It had two entrances, and all of the county people and all of the Canadians were constantly going in and out, 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 in and out. For dairy, because dairy is really important, and gas, because you can't get dairy well, you gas. So, <laughs> I made it. I made it through. It was amazing. <laughs> But uh, at the end of that, I, I arrived close to school, and school, Western is so beautiful. It's this beautiful campus surrounded by trees, and I could see it is in a little hill, and I was feeling so good. You know, when you breathe it in, I could smell it. It was victory. It was mine. And I started getting cocky. <laughs> And I was riding, and then I started seeing acquaintances of mine. I was like all waving like a princess. Hey there, check out my new bike. Yeah, mint green. Um, and I quickly realized, though, that I made a mistake. And my school was not located on a hill. It was located on Mount Everest. And I don't know how to shift. And I'm just, like, going for it, you know. And I'm going for it, and I'm going for it. I'm going to take a little pause to explain something. One of the people that I passed was they were walking. Uh, was this uh, friend of a friend who's so cool. I mean, this guy, so cool. He was a science major, but he was a DJ. And his hair, yeah, DJ, not lying. His hair was like, whew, like a lion. And he was walking, because that's how people would walk, right? He was walking, listening to his music. And when I was on the hill, I thought, hey, hey, what's going on? Take me out on my bike paid no attention to me. So by the time I made it to Everest, and I was like really struggle, and like there was just sweat, sweat falling off of me. And I was just going like, nothing's gonna stop me now. Nothing's gonna stop me now. He passed me. <laughs> As a matter of fact, everybody passed me. I was just going for it, trying so hard. Every single person that I had passed and waved at, they passed me walking faster. And some of the people that I didn't even left their house when I passed in front of it. They just all walked by. Eventually, gravity and I came to an understanding. And I very, with a lot of grace, I decided to dismount. The horror. The walk of shame had begun. And as I was rolling my bike, some really, really kind-hearted dude, it had to be white, of course, <laughs> approached me and said, oh, hey, friend, it seems like you have like a flat tire or something. Can I help you to get you back on the, on the, on the ride, on the road? So I <laughs> pretended to ignore. It's a, pretty, it's a pretty low moment. But I made it, I made it to the school, right? I just triumphed. Uh, and um, I found out a, a bike rack. I knew about those. And I like leaned my bike in. I was so excited because, you know, such a beauty needs to be kept safe. So I bought the best cable lock ever. It was a kryptonite brand name, right? And I made sure my handlebars were really well wrapped. Once I locked it in, you know, no one was going to take that baby from me. Uh-uh. So... I, uh, I struggled that night. I'm gonna fast forward, you don't wanna hear the rest. I, um, I really struggled that night. I was like, how, how am I gonna do it? Because you know, like, a lady like me does not do the walk of shame twice. <laughs> no, no. So I thought about it. <laughs> and if you know me, you know that I didn't thought about it. I stressed, I freaked out. And, uh, and I remembered that there is a bus there's a shuttle bus from the bottom of the hill all the way up Mount Everest. And I still had a bus pass. So it was great. I could uh, be a hard ass and ride all the way to downtown 
yes, bikey people, I'm one of you. And then I could just put the bike on the bus, run like a freaking princess, and leave shame behind. <laughs> it was excellent. I was so excited. Finally did it. Of course, now, now that I'm a, a bureaucrat, I am. So, you're so jealous. Me and Peter Coons, yeah. So now that I'm a bureaucrat, I actually understood what was happening. You see, I was walking, I was riding, and I was busing. And now that I understand, I can tell you that in sexy nerd talk, that is called multimodal commuting. <laughs> And I was doing it before it was cool.